Welcome guys and this is the new overview of Coral Draw 2022. This is following on from the ever popular videos that I've done the 21 and 20. So they're pretty complete. Um, they'll give you a basic understanding of the software and how to use it and get started as quickly as possible. Um, I'm going to go into a fair bit of detail but um, stick with me and by the end of this you should be able to have a good overview of the tools that we use. Now we will be touching on some of the new features, but I will be doing a separate video on the key, the new key features of Coral Draw 2022. A quick overview about me: um, I've been using Corel Draw now since version three, when I started a sign writing and apparel company, and I've been running that for about 20 odd years. Um, recently, I've sold that, and I still do quite a lot of work with Corel. Um, so yeah, it's it's a great piece of software, and it, it gets more and more. Um, decent features every time that they do it. There's some great features in this. If you are working in those industries that I was in, sign writing, apparel, um, creating branded clothing for people, or even if you're producing things like business cards and flyers, there's some real great like time-saving features in this, which would have been really, really good, especially the export feature. So if you haven't got yourself a version of this, jump over to CorelDraw.com and download here uh, your 15-day free trial, which is great. And um, if you can't afford to spend out on the the um, subscription, which is the previous version of 2021, which I'm not really uh, recommending, I'd want to stay up to date all the time. Get yourself 2022. It's only 26.58 a month at the moment, which is really good value. And for a professional piece of software like this that will run your business, it is incredible. Um, okay, so we will just have a quick look at some of the key features now for the new version of 2022. Um, these are all the, the apps that you get uh, within the software. We're going to be focus on, focusing on Corel Draw and a little bit on Paint. These are great if you're using, um, so you've got the Corel Draw app, which is great if you've got an iPad, you can use a pencil. Um, that's really nice. Font Manager, for, so organizing your fonts, put your favorite fonts together. Um, we've got After a, Shet, After a Shot, which is also great for, um, for just uh, tweaking those photos, making them look really, really nice. And you've got a screen capture software in here as well. So, like I said, this software really is the backbone of any business, especially if you're in that sign writing and the crossover with clothing and, and offering the complete solution. So I ran my business and my team, I trained my guys how to use the software and I can't honestly recommend it enough. It's a real great piece of software if you want to get up and running to doing your own design um, straight away it doesn't feel like you've got a huge learning curve it's it's a very nice quick gradual um, learning process and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through um, just using a few tools and get you up and running and making a few little um, logos to start with so we've got some new filters um, and a greater um, much fa great faster way of editing photos in here. Um, you've got your dynamic assets, which basically means if you created, say, a, a, a set, like let's just say it's a template um, for a customer that you're producing a flyer or a brochure and they decide to, they decide to change a particular thing in there, maybe it's their logo. Um, if you've got that hooked up to an asset um, system, then basically you can change the, the logo and that will change it all the way through the whole document that you're creating which is which is nice and handy as well uh, you've got collaboration mode so if you've got a team of people you can all work together on certain projects you can comment on the fly um, you can send proofs to customers they can also log in and have a look see how you're getting on and they can also comment so I you know I want that change on this photo here whatever as well so you can all work together nice and quickly so Corel Draw is a vector-based um, illustration software for reproducing or designing vector-based um, artwork. Works seamlessly with your um, equipment if, you, if you're running a sign studio like cutting equipment or plotters, printers. Um, if you've got a sign writing, uh, sorry, a screen printing studio, or if you want to integrate this into um, an embroidery software system, which we did as well. We used Wilcom and Pulse Tajima, that sort of thing. So we could start off by creating the base vector artwork for a t-shirt design, say, and then import that straight into um, your embroidery software and then take that through to sampling it out and getting it over to your customer. 
So we can look at different um, templates that are incorporated into Corel Draw as well. So here you've got some nice brochures. Um, yeah, font management, like I said, you know, we, we can stick together um, the, the, your favorite fonts and uh, just make it a lot easier for you when you are uh, producing software. So you'd have to keep scrolling through hundreds of different fonts. Okay, so let's jump over um, and have a quick look at Coral Draw 2022. So, so this is the latest version. I've just downloaded this um, off the, the website and installed it on this computer. So this is the March release, as you can see there. Right, so let's have a little look. Um, let's just double check that was a March release. Yeah, sure. So when you first open up, you can see straight away your this is your, your welcome window. You've got to get, in, get started. Um, so here you can quickly create a document. You can tailor your workspaces so you can have a light workspace. Touch if you're using your iPad. You've also, if you're used to Illustrator, you can take an Illustrator style look as well. Um, some news about what's going on with Corel, um, latest information. So look, there's a new update there on uh, photo background remove removal. So you can go in there and watch a video and people will tell you how quickest way to do it. Um, we've got some tutorials, which is nice. So customizing your workspace, using templates, transparencies, etc., cetera, um, which is great. Um, clipping tool, we'll go into that as well. And then you've got your store here. This shows you lots and lots of assets you can download. And I like this little button at the bottom, it says free, so you can go into that. And if you scroll down here, um, you'll see that you've got some transportation pack, which is free as well, which is good because um, in this series of videos, we are going to be looking at creating um, a vehicle graphics, um, some sign writing um, onto the vehicle. We're going to be looking at doing some T-shirts and business card on a flyer uh, for a, a fictitious electrical company. And we're going to be creating the logo. So it'd be good to get that downloaded. You can also go into the Academy if you are a subscriber. So you can sign up and work your way through and certify yourself um, through the training course as well. It will go through all of the different features. Okay, so getting started, let's click on get started. There's lots of different ways of creating a document, but straight off here, you can click on new document. You can click up to the top here. You can press control N, you can go file <laughs> and you can go new. So lots of different ways of creating a new document. Once that opens, you can, um, let's call this test. You can give it a name. Uh, we can look at the default um, presets. So whether we, we're looking at having a palette of CMYK, RGB, we'll just leave it at default for a minute. We'll talk a little bit about that later on. Set your page size, which is handy. Let's just stick with A4. You can have your orientation here. You can change it to a custom page if you want to. So it doesn't have to be that. Let's just say you were creating a web graphic and you wanted that in pixels, you could change that pixels and you could say, well, actually, um, 600 by 800 pixels would be uh, useful for me. Um, and then we could click OK and that would create this um, document. So using my mouse, there's a roller wheel on there and I can roll that backwards and forwards uh, to zoom in and out. If that doesn't work, then you can go up and you can go to your um, doo -doo -doo -doo. With, uh, uh, doo -doo. it's here sorry it is yeah that's right so you can um, you can either go if you want to set that up if that's not working if your mouse isn't zooming in and out then you can go to um, let's see if it's on there as well but yeah control J or with a little cog up there, and that will be under display. There you go, default action for mouse wheel zoom. So you can scroll, oh, to take left and right, or zoom in and out, so that's quite handy. Um, okay, so zooming in and out using your mouse wheel, you can also press F3 and F4, which F4 will bring whatever object you've got on screen. So let's just say it's this, press F4, it will fill the screen, F3, zooms back as well okay so down the side here we've got all your tools usually usually drawing tools and across here is your menu bar so let's quickly whip in across here we've got new we've got open uh, this will show recent files we've got save 
We've got um, cloud import and export to the cloud print. Um, then we've got copy and paste sort of thing here as well. That we're not interested in any of those. We've got here um, PDF export for PBS PDF publishing, which is really handy. Um, we, and again here, this is your Zoom, which I we just showed you a moment ago. So we can show um, to height of page. Um, we could just you can zoom right in. Ten percent. Okay. Um, let's have a quick look what else is going to be useful here. These are the size in. Um, your page size if you want to change it we can click a3 and then i'm not going to zoom back out because obviously that is a bigger page than the previous one which was 600 by 800 pixels so now we're working in millimeters here 297 millimeters by 420 and again you can change that to whatever you want uh, double clicking on this gray edge will actually open the same um, thing as well so you can change your page size there as well um, Units that you look work in, millimeters, inches, pixels, points, feet, yards, whatever you want, centimeters, kilometers, um, which is great if you are laying out something like um, a room and you want to design a room, for it, you know, you can do this actually to scale. Um, and then uh, let's jump down the side here as well. Uh, you can add more and more things. Anything you're missing off here, you can right click on this gray area and you can add in extra bits and pieces. Macros is quite important. Um, you would use them if you're integrating this piece of software to things like a Roland cutter, a vinyl cutter, which is if you're going to be cutting vinyl for T-shirts or sign writing. Same machine, multiple purposes. Um, coming down the side, so we've got your pick tool. Um, I'm going to pick out the ones that are going to be most important to you for a moment, okay? Freehand is when you need to select something, but pick is going to be something you're going to keep coming back to all the time. You've got your shape tool, very important. Um, we're going to be using that to manipulate um, vector lines, okay? Um, and we'll look at some of these bits as we move through um, to build them up because if I just give you the basic things straight away, it's going to really help you get started quickly. Crop, obviously, is a crop tool just like any photo, photo sort of crop in. Uh, pan and zoom, uh, H is going to be able to um, be able to pan around the screen so if you if you hover over that you see you've got H and Z that's your shortcut keys and P is pick so if I just press um, if I come back here and then just go uh, sorry zoom you can zoom in and out using that there okay so uh, we've got here the Bezier tool pen uh, freehand tool. I like using the Bezier tool um, to draw things. You basically would click down, come around to another point, click and hold, and this would give you your handles. Okay, so if you are creating or tracing an object, then you're going to be using this to manipulate. You can come in and out at different angles, and these are all called different things. So you might have a, a straight a curve and you may have a cusp which is where you come in and out at a sharp intersection so once you've drawn um, a vector like this then you would come back to your shape tool and this is where you would then um, be able to manipulate this you see so this would allow you to um, actually grab hold of the node points or the handles and manipulate them to to tweak them how you want them to look. Now, if you wanted to add in an extra node point in here because you felt that you couldn't quite get around an object, you could double click on one of these node points. And similarly, if you wanted to get rid of one, you could double click on one to take one out. You can change how this node point and line react together by highlighting one or two of them and saying, actually, I want this now to be a straight. And you go up to here, click straight, and that would actually change that now to a straight line. So you can see that if um, you wanted to make that bend, you couldn't until you'd actually change this to back to a, a curve. And then at that point, then you can come in, click on the line and highlight both of those together, create a curve, click away because you've got two nodes selected. And then here we can change how that reacts let's delete that so highlighting that object control z unders 
clicking on the object and then pressing delete gets rid of it. Okay, so coming down, we've got a artistic tool, more for creating um, drawings, but I'm going to focus on uh, vector-based drawings for sign writing and, and um, clothing at the moment. So rectangle tool, so we can click on that. So you see on these, they've got like a little triangle in the bottom corner. If you click and hold, you get a fly out menu and it gives you different options. So here we can create um, a square or a rectangle. Now I'm clicking and dragging from left to right in a diagonal manner towards the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Um, and if I press down the control key, that is going to keep this a uniform. So the aspect ratio is going to be equal, which basically means it's going to be creating a square. And when I let go, you can see here in the sizing that I've actually got a square. Now, if I lock the object using this little padlock here and change this to 100 millimeters, press enter, you can see that it changes the height and the width the same. Now, if I wanted another one of these on screen, I could duplicate it. So I could right click and I could say uh, copy and paste it or I could click on it and press Control D, which is duplicate. And you can see that it's created a secondary object. Now, if I was to put that, let's say, next to that object here, and I wanted another one, exactly the same spacing again, as long as I'm not clicked away, I could press Control D again and D, and that would give me multiple copies of that same object. Now, you can see that they're slightly staggered down and not all in line. And if you're not sure, you can always click and drag your ruler down to see if they are in line. You can see they're slightly out, which is quite annoying. So what I would do in this case is click and drag a box around these four squares and press for E. Um, so E will align it um, through this horizontal plane and C through this vertical plane. So it's stacking them all together. So next one down here is the ellipse tool, um, which is the circle. So we can click again, holding down the control, and that is going to make a perfectly round circle. Um, if we want to click, um, hold down the shift, hold down the control, and click and drag, it makes a circle from the center point. That's the same, actually, if you are using the square or polygon tool as well. So we can do that here. So if we use the polygon tool, we can, up at the top bar here, increase the amount of sides that it has as well. Um, so we can screw that down from four up to eight. Now, if you want to change anything on this, you can click and drag some of the points, and that will change the depth of the inner point of the star to the outer points of the star, you see? And we can change the direction as well so that we can give that a bit of a skew lots of things you can do with that um also let me just go to yeah so we got the three point ellipse as well and i'll just better give you that one so one two so here we can make the circle we can make that a pie shape or we can make that open circle so if you wanted to fill that it wouldn't uh, fill because it's not going to be able to capture the the ink as such so what we're going to do here as well let me just show you two circles together so if i overlap them slightly and then i draw a box around the two objects excluding this one if i wanted to include that i'd put a box around all three but let me just drag around those two points now what I can do here is I can um, press the E and the C to align centrally. Now we can group these together by pressing Control G, so to make them two objects grouped together, or we can combine the objects. Now combining and grouping are basically putting the objects together, but combining is, is allowing two objects to become one. So here we've got the out, outer circle. So if I colour it red, you can see what I'm talking about. And the inner circle is yellow. Now let's just say I wanted this to be a board around the outside only. What I would do is highlight both objects and press Control and L, combine them. And now you can see that this is actually um, 
not an inner circle it is actually if I highlight over that you can see it's see-through uh, so this is really useful actually for for all sorts of um, applications let me show you another thing you can do here as well let's go back to picking up uh, an ellipse tool let's put in one circle another circle now with them overlap slightly I can highlight both of them now depending on the um, positioning and the layering a layer is where um, you build up objects on top of each other so let me just color one green and one yellow and see so here we can see that the green object is underneath the yellow now we can have a look at that by clicking on the right docker panel on here if you can't find these then you can go up to um, window and dockers and then here you can add anything that you want so you can see here that we've got the, the green and the yellow over the top if I want to change the order I could click and drag it down and drop it underneath um, or <clears throat> I can click it right click and I can then send it to a different position so in this case I would go down to order and I could say to back of page um, and again we could, with this as well we can actually add that on um, as a feature up here as well but let's just go for a moment let's just show you something else we can do so let's just say that I want this object to punch out the one underneath so if I highlight both of them what I can do here is I can select this tool here and that is back minus front so highlighting both of them this one's on the top you can see here that the one behind is the dominant point I punch that out it's going to leave me um, a little little um, moon shape let's try it the other way around so this way it's going to cut into the one on top now also another one which is really good is combine which makes it one object Control Z I'm undoing all the time and trim which is going to give me both objects but trimmed at the intersect point and finally one more useful tool which you'll come up which will be very very handy actually will be this one over here which is create a boundary now this is especially useful if you are using a print plotter and you need to create a cut path around the outside which basically means you have a machine that's like an inkjet printer and then it goes back and cuts the object out so if I click on create boundary I can now pick up that boundary point and show you here it is here okay so I'll double click down here it's not um, coming up with a palette so what we need to do is we need to get a palette opened inside this so let's have a little look at colors um, right let's open a palette now we're going to need to find the root file so this is just this is quite handy actually because it's um, something you might come across so let's go to program files corral uh, 2022 um, color palettes now what I'm looking for is spots so spot you can see Roland double click on Roland and I would be in this particular case using verse work so I'm opening that and that over this side now on the right hand side you can see is open this bar now if I was using a print cut system and I, I wanted to print this and cut it out then this would be sat around the outside um, I would have a bleed edge on that a bleed um, for anyone that's not knowing is um, something that if if you've got a white background here and this uh, registration when it cuts it slightly out what that's what's going to happen there is you're going to get a little bit of a white edge on it so what you would always do is give yourself some bleed area so a bit more yellow a bit more green around the outside but if I come over here and right click on this contour cut contour you can see now that it's actually got my cut contour path now we'd set that to hairline um, and that is now going to be able to tell the machine when we export this as the right sort of format that we're going to print this and we're going to cut at this point here so let's just say we want to put a, a con put the cut line on the inside of this so that's giving us a little bit of an edge for bleed here um, 
what I'm going to do is wrong tool. I'm going to click on here and I'm going to go down to contour. Click on the contour and I'm going to pull that on the inside like so. And this, I want to make this the actual cut line. So right click on that edge there. So first off, I am going to um, break that apart. So object, control K, that is break apart. Now go back to my pick tool, come down, select this line, and I'm going to right click. And you can see now this is now a cut path. This one here, I can right click on no fill, and that will get rid of that. And you see on here, I've got a um, black score line, a uh, stroke on the outside of that. I can come back and on either of these two, which is the white square with the red line through the middle, basically means no, um, no um, stroke line. So if I click on the outside of this to grab it, I'm going to right click there. I'll get rid of that. And then this one, right, so uh, battery is going a bit. Okay, here we go. So we've got our, um, so, so if you was to put this on a, uh, let's just say a black background like so um, and then I'm going to send that to the back so I go back to my pick tool click on that right click order send to the back of the page you can see that um, if there's any issues with registration then it's going to be retained with inside of this border and so if we've got a slight bit of movement let me show what the registration could shift could look like through printing and cutting um, it could move slightly over like that so let's just go over the text tool next. So text, click down. Let's put, okay. Now what we can do here, there's two ways of creating text. One, you can click straight down or two, you can click and drag a box. If you put text within a box, it's, constra it's constrained within the, the boundaries of this box. That can be used for like doing columns, um, it can also be used for like for levers hood is where you have lists of different names and it it follows different um, two different areas so you can put lots and lots of names and it would wrap from one number say like a, if it was 22 for this year it'd be a, some of the names would be in the 20 then in the two and then some more names in the other two and um, we can show you that if you like as well let's delete that so we've, we've just clicked down and typed in hello like so, uh, you can click up here with this still selected, and then we can look at some of the fonts we've got available to us on here. Let's select one. This is Bada Boom. Um, there's loads and loads of free fonts on DA font as well. So you can um, change the size. We can also add color by clicking on the palette on the right hand side, um, like so. Now we can also um, have a look at let's have a look here what the properties of this particular prop um, text so these little flyouts on the side on the docker we can look at some different sort of effects so what we got here some presets we've got some two pattern fills actually these would be good so you can see here we can have like um, cow shape we can select um, let's have a quick look here fill uniform uh, to pattern fill so we can do that if I right click actually on one of these here as well it's going to show me a outline as well so you can just get a bit of an idea you, you can uh, make it stand out a little while now if I was going to be using this for vinyl um, immediately there I could see that if I put a right fill uh, right stroke white stroke line around that you can see here we've got a crossover point now, if you're using a cutter and cutting vinyl, then what's going to happen is this bit's going to be scored. So what you can do here is you can use your shape tool and you can drag one of these little arrows and that's going to give you a bit of spacing in between. Also, if, it, if you didn't want to do that, let's undo that, and you just wanted to move the O, you could click on the little dot there and move that across slightly just on its own. So it doesn't look like, because you might not want all that space in one go. Now, one other thing that's very useful you see a lot is with people's logos is that they utilize standard fonts and then they tweak them slightly. So in this, let's just say that um, we wanted to move the center point of this circle um, and we wanted to round off the, uh, let's make these a bit sharper points. 
So first off, what we need to do is create this into away from being text, and we want to make this now um, paths. So what we do is create curves. Now this now no longer is text, so it's not editable as a font. So if you were going to want to do some um, revisions on this, it might be worth um, duplicating or set, copy and pasting this and keeping it to one side. So now we can go back to our shape tool. We can do what we want with it. So we could click on one of these node points and we could create something a little bit more erratic. Let's just say that you wanted that. I'm not sure if you do. Circle in the middle there. So if we wanted to then move the center points, we could highlight all of these bits if we wanted and we could pull that up there. We might want to actually change the, the bit in the middle. I don't know. Whatever you want to do with it. Um, if we wanted to add some color to this now, we can come back to our um, objects, um, properties, and then in here, fill at the top, change the color. We could go with, um, let's maybe choose um, this one here so we could have a blend of colors. And we could say we want to go from pink, but we want to go to black. So you can see here you can adjust the how much. Um, the blend is so we can have it very gradual from one side to the other or we could come across to be in quite a harsh point we could double click here and we could add in another color if we wanted so at this point we could go let's go with a darker color moving right back out to white over this side and actually I don't want white we'll double click on that brings a box up underneath here let's change that to oh, I don't know, horrible horrible color like that now you might want to drop in a shadow behind there as well so we can come back to the left hand side contour um, and drop down and find shadow and here we can click and drag and drop a shadow in underneath so let's do that now okay so a couple of quick things before we wrap this one up so we can look at the objects over here um, it's called curve and so what we could do in this point is we could save that and call it hello now something that's really really useful is the export feature um, on this docker window and here this object is highlighted we know that because it's grouped it's um it's called it's called uh, hello and if i click on here add new it's going to pull this in now we can say what we want this to be exported as so let's just say i'm doing a bit of work for um the company and they want this logo that I've created exported for a um, website we can export this as PNG with a transparent background um, I also might want to export this for a print file as an EPS that's um, going to go into one of my printers printer plotters um, so I can select that as well and then we can go down here, click export, select the directory where we're going to store it. So we go documents, we could say corral, we put new folder, exports, um, and I'll select that folder. And you just hit export, um, go for it. Um, we might want to say hello, that would, because we've got two files there. Hello, EPS, let's just put that. So you've got your PNG file. With a transparent background like so and then you've got an eps file which is going to run straight into some of your printing equipment finally if you want to save it file save as select a directory boom you're done okay so in the next video we're going to look at reproducing um one of these okay a start of a process of actually start to get to draw um so i hope you enjoyed this video and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and join me in the next video